And here comes the Ali people out of the dressing room, and all of the questions will be answered. This is an awesome bar of George Foreman against the varnished boxing skills of Muhammad Ali. Here comes Ali. You can see him there, very calm. If you saw the interview, there's no question on my mind, and I don't think anybody else's mind here at ringside about the tremendous confidence of this tremendous athlete. It's age against youth. The experience of Muhammad Ali against the youth and brute force on blinding speed. You can hear the band beginning to strike up in the background as Ali moves to the ring. This is what Muhammad Ali lives for. This is the man's life. This may be a historic event. Muhammad Ali coming into the boxing ring for the last time. Should Muhammad Ali retire, this will be, what you're seeing now, a very historic event. Should Ali win the title tonight, it definitely is an historic event because he will have to definitely go down in the history of boxing as one of the all-time greats. His handler, Angelo Dundee, brings him in. And there you hear the sound of Ali Bumaye. That's what the local people say. And you can see Ali is getting a standing ovation from some 70,000 we estimate in attendance here as he dances behind the American flag. Muhammad Ali will be gloved in the ring, as will George Foreman. How about it, Jimmy? Uh, any thoughts on what it's like for an athlete to go into the field of battle? It's tremendous pressure, uh, Bob, you know, no doubt about it. Uh, but I think along with the pressure, there's a great feeling because it's like once in a lifetime you can do something that's great that maybe no one else can ever do again. That's very important as we take a look across the ring at Muhammad Ali bouncing around is Dr. Ferdi Pacheco, a physician, a man that certainly has the ability to help the uh, aging former champion Muhammad Ali should he get in trouble. And of course his handler, a man that's been with him all the way, Angelo Dundee. I have to give the corner strength to the Muhammad Ali group based on the just sheer fact that George Foreman was cut. There's a possibility that he could be cut against. Ali has lashing, cutting type punches. He's got tremendous speed in his hands. Still has good speed of foot. Just how much speed in this humidity, we just don't know. Angelo Dundee looking around, and again, I talk about that corner being important. Angelo spent this afternoon over here making sure the ropes were tight, making sure that there was enough rosin on the canvas here. And now we understand that George Foreman is about to make his way to the ring as Arlie continues to dance and build up a little bit of a sweat and get ready for this big fight. And right at the ringside there, I see right at the ringside, standing, watching everything fascinatingly over there, Joe Frazier, the former world champion, right there at the ringside like any other fan in this vast auditorium. He says he wants the winner too. I think he's more than a fan in this case, David. I think that he definitely has his sights set on maybe a $5 million purse for Joe Frazier should he get the opportunity to meet the world heavyweight champion again. A very understandable human ambition. We hope to be talking to Joe a little later on about the way he thinks the fight's going, if he can get over to our commentary position over on this side of the ring. While we have the opportunity, we can give you an idea of the instructions that the fighters will be receiving. First off, this is a 19-foot ring. Muhammad Ali, of course, wanted the larger ring for his dancing, wanted a 20-foot ring, but the uh, Everlast Company had to come through and create this new 19-foot uh, ring. The uh, foreman camp wanted an 18-foot ring, understandably, so they could cut off Ali in the corners. The scoring of this fight will be the 10-point must system. The free knockdown rule is waived. The count will continue after the bell in every round, with the exception, of course, of the 50 15th round, which ends the fight. They're using 8-ounce championship gloves. As we mentioned, both fighters will be gloved in the ring. They have their hands taped in their respective locker rooms, and the taping was watched by boxing officials uh, from the African Boxing Union and from the World Boxing Council and a member of the opposing corner. You hear a tremendous roar. We don't see him yet, but we can only assume that George Foreman is on his way out here. We still don't see any indication of George Foreman. Is there any protocol on this sort of thing? Bob, that those chairs of Ali and his movements in the ring, you know, he's putting on his show and the people love it. Is there any uh, protocol about this sort of thing? How long can a champion keep a challenger waiting? Is it gamesmanship? 
Is he trying to tire him before the fight starts? How long could a champion keep him waiting? I don't know what the exact rule is on that or if in fact there is, but uh, you would think that somebody who is in the locker room with the World Boxing Council will have him out here. This does play a very definite psychological effect. Football coaches Jim Brown sometimes would like to keep their football team in so the other team that comes out really keyed up can uh, kind of cool down a little bit before the ball game starts. Could be the same thing tonight. Of course, because you keep looking over your shoulder. You don't know how long it's going to be and it puts extra pressure. We mentioned that this fight is under the sanction of the World Boxing Council and the African Boxing Union. The officials, the judges will be Adala from Turkey and James Taylor from the United States. We have no last name for Adala, we'll just assume he's Adala. And the referee will be Zach Clayton. And Zach Clayton is uh, actually a veteran of the ring. Zach Clayton refereed the second Walcott Lewis fight, as some of you may recall, in Yankee Stadium. He's been kind of inactive as far as refereeing goes in recent years. He is a former uh, Harlem Globe trotter, proving uh, beyond any reasonable shadow of a doubt he's a fine athlete. He's also the chairman of the Pennsylvania State Boxing Commission. This is Joe Frazier looking intent. Muhammad Ali continues to dance around getting himself warmed up a little bit. I bet you that Ali does not like this waiting, nor does Angelo Dundee. That's Drew Bundini Brown, who is the character of sorts from the Ali camp. Well, I think George has been doing a lot of this in the last couple of weeks. You know, he's been really trying to psych Ali out, and I think tonight uh, he's, o he's overdoing it a little bit, I assuming that uh, he's really trying to psych him out. Well, I don't understand. It's a really interesting point, this, which way it will work, actually, isn't it? Because there will become a point where Muhammad Ali will, may get worried, and then there will become another point where he may get furious. We may see a more angry Muhammad Ali than we've ever seen before. You never know how these ploys work. There's or the maybe, famous feat. Five million dollars on the hoof, we'll call it for tonight. Or maybe George Foreman is just not coming. Or maybe. That's a, that's a thought that, that I didn't think of. You know, a very good point, though. In the last week, I think most of the writers have changed their mind about uh, the over Foreman being the overwhelming favorite. I think they have. I think they have. Did you catch that glance there in the intenseness of the eye of Muhammad Ali as he looked towards the outside, looking for George Foreman? Shadow boxing around for uh, 60 seconds to two minutes to three minutes does no good for a man 32 years old when he's fighting a man that is... A few years younger. Foreman's jerking no, his Bob, off. that's not usual, true. Right? <laughs> it only loosens up the muscles. <laughs> yes, there's no danger of a pulled muscle now. But we are starting right? to reach the point where uh, George Foreman is... Foreman's not jerking us off. Ali, you can see... Overstaying his non-welcome. David, excuse me, Ali, you can see has a tremendous sweat already built up, which is another indication of the uh, humidity that we've talked about. And we'll keep mentioning that. Now here comes the heavyweight champion of the world, George Foreman, jogging on. George Foreman decked out in his red robe, coming in with his people. Listen to the ovation that he's getting. I don't know whether I'm right or wrong in this, but it appears that Foreman's getting a little bit more of an ovation Although, as we, although as we were saying, he came just in time, because I don't know whether you noticed there, about, but at the beginning of Foreman entering, there were a few boos. People were beginning to resent the delay. Now the excitement of the big fight being about to begin is overwhelming that. But he really was timing it very tightly indeed. Well, there he is, the heavyweight champion of the world in there. Takes a look across the ring at Muhammad Ali. Look at Ali. There, is some, a look clear, right there is some clear booing. There is a little booing. There is a little booing. There definitely is. A little bit of booing. George Foreman in his red robe dancing around, casts a little glance across to Muhammad Ali. And now the ring announcements are just about set to begin. There'll be two national anthems played tonight. Now the cheer starts Ali here at ringside as they focus in on George Foreman, the heavyweight champion of the world. He looks around and is talking to Archie Moore, a pretty country fair fighter in his own day. And the, yes, the shouts for Ali, at least in this part of the auditorium, are dwarfing any others. Trying to figure out exactly what the possible delay could be here now. They've had about all the delays they could possibly have tonight. And we should have the announcements very quickly. This is 
Chimpupu Chimpupu, who is the chef de press here in uh, Zaire in Kinshasa. Now the ring announcements are officially going on. Les hymnes They're having national. trouble with the audio system here in the L'hymne arena, national. so the people American. actually in attendance can't hear any ring announcements, and this is the delay at this particular time. This is, of course, the national anthem. dancing around. This will be the national anthem of the country of Zaire. fighter George Foreman for just a moment George Foreman of course has a tremendous record of 40 wins no losses 37 knockouts this product born in Marshall Texas and now living in Haywood California age 24 years old 63 and weighs 220 the big story as far as the tail of the tape is concerned is that Ali has an inch and a half reach on George Foreman this could play a little bit of a difference in the fight George Foreman has the tremendous record. As we take a look at his last few fights, it's uh, almost unbelievable that he hasn't fought uh, a full 15 rounds in total since 1972. And as we look at his past eight fights, everything has gone 
not beyond the second round. He knocked out Murray Goodwin in Austin in the second round. Clarence Boone in Beaumont, Texas in the second round. Ted Gullick in the second round. He knocked him out in Los Angeles. Miguel Paz was knocked out in Oakland, California as Ali looks on. And he knocked out Terry Souls in Salt Lake City also in the second round. All in 1972. In 1972, well, that was a big year for Foreman, winning all of his fights. 73, even a bigger year. Yeah, his first fight, these. January 22nd of 1973. He beat Joe Frazier down in Kingston, Jamaica, and won the World Heavyweight Championship fight in that dramatic second round the knockout. And then he defended his championship for the first time on August 31st against Jose King Roman in Tokyo, Japan, and retained the World Heavyweight Championship. Then, of course, was the fight, the last fight, by Video Techniques in 1974, this year down in Caracas, Venezuela in March, March 26th to be exact, the second round knockout over Kenny Norton, again retaining the World Heavyweight Championship. As far as Muhammad Ali is concerned, the highlights in his career, as most of you are aware of. He won the championship from Charles Sonny Liston, February 25, 1964, a seventh round knockout on Miami Beach. He defended his title nine times before the layoff in 1968 and 1969. He won seven of those fights by the knockout route. Now, since the layoff, he's had 17 fights. This is Muhammad Ali, the man we're talking about. Ali, 17 fights since the layoff, 15 and 2, yeah, 8 a knockouts. A great scene going on on the stage there now. On the world stage, in fact, at this very moment in time. I don't think we can catch it with our microphones, but... Ali, obviously, David yelling across the way at George Foreman, trying to psych him and taunt him. This is all part of his tactics. This is something we're going to have to see the younger fighter, whether he can tolerate this, whether he will. In fact, so far, it certainly doesn't seem that uh, Muhammad Ali was demoralized by that delay. <laughs> no, it doesn't. George <laughs> Foreman, of course, the much more serious fighter. Ali will attempt to bewilder and frustrate the man, not only by chatter, but by his movements in the ring, Jimmy. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he was winking and making fun of Foreman, uh, trembling and doing all sort of things. I mean, he's probably the bravest guy right now in this arena. That man looks pretty serious himself right there. Cracks a little smile as he looks towards that camera. There's a face of determination. 220 pounds of sheer muscle, a strong, speedy individual with tremendous courage. And now we have a man at ringside who knows quite a bit about it. And David, I'm going to throw it over to you. Yes, I'm sitting here next to Joe Fraser. And Joe, I was just wondering at the moment, what are your impressions thus far? What do you sense of the mood? I saw you at ringside over the other side. Hi, Jim. How you doing? How you doing, Joe, baby? Okay. Good to see you. Uh, the main thing about it, uh, David, uh, both guys look like they're in good shape. Uh, they all seem like they're in good spirit. Uh, everybody kidding around with each other. I should see the good fight. Nobody look like they're afraid of each other. That's for sure. <laughs> Are you making any predictions? Well, I guess anyway from 1 to 15, I uh, hope it'll be a good fight. And I take on the champion. <laughs> you're backing the champion? Yeah, you better believe it. By, and between 1 and 15, you're taking any range. It could, could it actually go the full distance? Well, I would say yeah, then I'd say no. You know, I, I really don't know what to say because I haven't visited the camp uh, so far. I just seen uh, news media and different things, what the guys be doing, but uh, I don't really know what's but going Joe, on. But Joe, Joe, one, one question. Yes, Do you yes. really think that Ali has a chance? Now, you know. Uh, uh, the way I feel about Jimmy, uh, uh, don't mind going, Jimmy. Uh, <laughs> Not at all. Uh, the guys, is uh, two men out there, and uh, everybody on their own. That's right, man. Uh, I think the guy got a good chance. I mean, he got two hands. He been working for two months all together, so therefore, he should know what he has to do. You respect his skills. Oh, I respect him. All, but all guys with two hands, believe Beautiful. me. We should have a good fight then. That's and in fact, at the moment, does he look fitter to you than he was in his last fight with you or less fit, Mohammed? I would say I think he's about maybe two or three pounds uh, lighter. Two or three pounds lighter. I would say he's about two or three pounds lighter. They say about, about 216. I'll give him about uh, maybe 213 to 14 pounds. Or maybe 13. Joe, Bob. one question to ask you. Both of these fellows are capable of dishing out tremendous punishment. One does it with one punch, the other does it over a period of rounds. How can you uh, can you just make a comment on that for our worldwide audience? Well, I, I wouldn't say that, uh, you know, uh, my man look, <laughs> over here been able to give it out, uh, dish it out. I think that uh, uh, George is capable of dishing it out. I don't know about taking it, but uh, as a big man, he's a big man. He should be able to take most anything. 
Well, that's the view of a man who should know. A man who should know Joe Frazier, who's going to stay here with us and watch the fight with us. It's getting very close to fight time. Blow by blow commentary is going to be by Mr. Bob Sheridan. We'll be taking over in a moment or two to give us the blow by blow. And at the end of the first round, we'll come back, <coughs> Joe, for a comment from you. Well, I think it should be a real good fight. And somehow, you guys just got me here working. How about that? I come to have a, a vacation and watch the fight. Hey, I'm calling blow by blow for free. Watch it, boy. Well, <laughs> next time, next time you're going to get five million dollars for working this time. Yeah, how about that? Good. I don't mind doing. I enjoy it. That's a nice thought, isn't it? Jim around, so therefore, it's always nice being in his company and yours. Well, you know, Thank I love you, Joe. Joe. Look at this now as they stare. Muhammad Ali beginning to talk to George Foreman. They're really putting the stare on each other. George Foreman has that serious look. Ali definitely talking to him. Look at the stare on George Foreman. Look at Ali give him the word. So the stage is set. We're just about ready to begin. Round one, the heavyweight championship of the world at stake. There can be no more pure form of sport than a heavyweight championship fight when two individuals, finely tuned athletes, climb into the ring. This time, the championship is at stake, and $5 million will be paid to both fighters. Ali ready, Foreman ready. We're waiting for the opening bell. The enthusiasm begins to mount here. One thing we want to look out for is just how fast this man, George Foreman, will open. As we mentioned in his past several fights he hasn't gone in the past four years beyond two rounds in any fight. Can Ali dance and stay away from him? Is George Foreman's thundering punches going to be too much for him? Is the left hook that is so devastating, the tremendous left hook, going to stop Ali? Here we go, Ali quickly across the round. Round one, Ali bouncing around, shifting left for right. George moves slow, Ali gets the first punch in, a light right hand taken on the forehead by George Foreman, the champion. Foreman moving slow, trying to stalk his man. Ali looks uh, like he's ready to go here. He's not staying away, he's going after his man. Foreman comes in, Foreman a bit cautious in the first round, looking to drop that left hook. There's that left uppercut and jab to the body of Muhammad Ali. Ali tries to hang on to the head of George Foreman. Foreman dances now. Moves Ali with a right hand lead again. Has Foreman slightly confused with that right hand lead, which I haven't seen too many times before. Ali certainly dancing, slipping punches, sliding around both ways. Foreman's idea is to back him off into the corner, and when they get tight, to wail away with that vicious hook to the body of Muhammad Ali. Ali lashes out with a light left. A straight right hand. Forehead of George Foreman. George Foreman again takes a light left inside as he tries to work to the body of Muhammad Ali. That's Ali on your right. Foreman on the left. A wild left hand thrown by George Foreman. Taken on the side of the head of Ali. The pace is tremendous in round one. George Foreman with his face to you. Ali to the left. Ali tries to tie him up. He's leaning on Foreman. Foreman with a vicious uppercut. Misses. Ticket it for the head of Ali. Ali stands back. Ties his man up. Leans on the rope. Tells him. Whispers in his ear. Taunting him. So far, Ali looks pretty impressive in round one. This Foreman throws a light glancing blow. Ticket it for the head of Ali. But goes over the shoulder of Muhammad Ali. Ali shifts right. Bounces left. Takes the light left on the side of the head. Wild left hand thrown on the side of the head of Muhammad Ali. Look at the referee. Zach Clayton having his problems. One minute left in round number one. The heavyweight championship between Muhammad Ali and George Foreman, live via satellite, direct from Zaire, Africa. That punch did no damage. That one did. Two wild right hands taken on the side of the head of Muhammad Ali. Ali continues to try to tie his man up. Zach Clayton separates him. Wild left hand, vicious hook. There's a real strong right hand just underneath the heart. And Muhammad Ali is taking some punishment now. About 25 seconds left in the round. Ali, face left, throws the straight right hand. That right hand lead has George Foreman slightly confused, but a straight left jab thrown by Foreman has Ali in the corner. Ali dances back, hangs on. What a tremendous, tremendous face in round number one. The hook to the body of Muhammad Ali. Zach Clayton, the referee, separates him. About eight seconds left in the round. Round one, Foreman and Ali ending round one. There he is, Muhammad Ali, who started a tremendous...
tremendous pace. The big story in this heat is whether he can continue to do that. He did allow this man, George Foreman, to back him off into corners. This is not good for Muhammad Ali. Not unless he can hang on to that head and tie him up. Well, let's ask the man who's fought him, Joe Frazier. What, what did you think of that round? Well, I would say that uh, the round was very even towards that team. That's the rounds look very close. You wouldn't call that round for Ali? No, I said pretty even because they hit him some pretty good shots in there also. I'd say about two or three good shots in the face, but George landing body shots also. So you'd call that one even? I... Here we go, round number two, the determined Ali get off his stool in between rounds. George Foreman sat down all the way. Ali with a back up against the rope. He's talking to Foreman still. Ali tries to tie him up. No real damage done in that exchange at all by either fighter. Round two just underway. That wild left hand that George Foreman throws is trying to get to Ali. I can't see any puffiness over the right eye of George Foreman at this point, although Ali has hit him on the button. Ali is the section of Ali. Ali has a tremendous strength to the midsection. George Foreman is headhunting himself. Ali tries to hang on. The pace not quite what it was in round one. Ali backs up, leans out, takes advantage of the reach. Foreman tries to work the body. Neither one of those punches did any damage. None of those punches are doing any damage at all. None, absolutely none. There's a light flicking left hand to the face of George Foreman. Foreman pushing the head back of Ali, and Ali hangs on. This hanging on tactic is important for Muhammad Ali, who must take a breather now and then. Left hand, light left, taken on the chin of Ali. That wild left hand is not scoring, not getting through. Left jab right in the button, thrown by Ali. Another left jab. Ali showing his flinching speed as Foreman continues to wail at the body of Muhammad Ali. Another left hand on the right eye of George Foreman, the right eye that was cut in training. Still cannot see if it's puffy at all. George Foreman continues to stop a very powerful hook, both hands, left hooks, and what would really be a, a right cross is a hook for George Foreman, misses the left hand. Ali inviting him to punch. Shows him the tremendous Ali slipping of punches as he twists the body to the side. Ali backs up and jabs as he backs up. About 45 seconds left in round two. An even fight to this point. The pace has definitely slowed down in round two. Oh, a great left hand. An over and under combination. The left hand and then the right on the jaw. Taken by the champion, George Foreman. There's a left hand in the eye of Foreman. Ali scoring some punches here. These punches are not hurting him that he's taking on the side of the head. 30 seconds left in round. Left jab, a lightning flicking left to the right eye of George Foreman. Ten seconds left in round number two. Now he's pulling what he did against Joe Frazier, shaking his head. No, no, he says. The left hand gets through again. There's the bell, ending round two. An incredible round. What did you make of that, Joe Frazier? So good around as the coach. Very close round. Because hell what you're doing. You've heard people looking at a fight about him doing it. But George is bound in that body and shot. He's urgent in that body. And otherwise you shouldn't stay on that rope. Do you think Ali is making a mistake tactically then every time he does that? I stay in it. He needs to move. He don't need to stay on that rope. He did that with you in the first fight with you at Madison Square Garden. He George stayed on the rope and you hit him a lot. He don't move or cut George. George is walking down. He needs to move. He don't need to stay on that rope. For what reason on the rope? Jim Brown. Muhammad Ali is punishing George Foreman even though he is on the rope. He is getting some tremendous blows in, and at some point that can tell on Foreman. Is Foreman vulnerable to the blows Ali's been striking, do you think? I would say, well, yeah, then no. We were able to observe a little bit of puffiness under the left eye of George Foreman, the left eye, not the right eye. Oh, what a combination landed by Ali to the face of George Foreman. Round three just underway. Very even fight. I would have to score round two slightly in favor of Muhammad Ali. There's the left flicking in the face of George Foreman. George Foreman backing Ali to the ropes. There's the vicious left hook to the body. Misses the left again, the right to the body. Thrown by George Foreman. Ali is getting away with hanging on to the head of Foreman. Foreman will push and try to set up his punch. Watch him push. There's the right hand. When he pushes, he tries to do it off of that. That's his secret. Continues to work downstairs on Muhammad Ali. 
Round three, very close. Heavyweight championship fight. Ali on the left. Foreman misses the right hand. Ali scores with his own right. Foreman setting him up against the rope. What a vicious, fast combination by Ali. Ali definitely showing the hand speed in this fight. There's the chant. Ali Bumbaye. That means Ali, kill him. In the sporting sense of war. But that punch did no damage again. Ticket it to the head of Muhammad Ali. But that punch did. Look at him whispering in the ear of Foreman. Why he continues to taunt him. Ali's super confident. Foreman looks unusually slow with his hands. But look at this now. All of a sudden he opens up. Four punches downstairs on Ali. Ali, of course, has protection around that area he was being hit by. Ali showing the ability to punch inside against George Foreman. Now the fighters move across the ring. A right hand lead by Foreman this time. Another right hand. A good right hand taken on the left side of the cheek on the jaw of Muhammad Ali. That was the best punch so far for George Foreman. I don't know if you saw it, but it did spin the head around of Muhammad Ali. I have to say the heaviest punch so far was definitely landed by Foreman in that exchange. Ali trying to hang on. Might have been just stunned by that blow. Vicious right hand goes whistling by the nose of Ali. Ali continues to talk to George Foreman. Continues to talk. Continues to taunt. 30 seconds left in round number three. Foreman looking for his opening to unload that left hand underneath the heart of Ali and drop the right. There he goes to the right, but it just didn't land that time. Very even fight. Ten seconds left now in round three. Ali showing his combination. The hand speed. Left, right, left combination to the head of Foreman. Foreman again takes the right hand. Right on the left side of the head. A foul and foul play. Did it look there? Did it? Let's look at that again. We've got a slow motion coming up. We've got a slow motion coming up again. Watch this now. Watch this inside the replay here. Foreman will come across. Was Foreman hurt there? Joe Frazier. I would say George is rushing himself too much. He needs to take his time and watch what he's doing. And I. Uh, as time go by, this would tell on him. And uh, I feel like this would tell because he's not really calming himself. He's not being calm. Well, anyway, there, that look, that fight, would you say that round went, in fact, to Muhammad Ali? I would say, yeah, that's his round. That round went to win Muhammad Ali. John Daly, the man behind the fight, is here. We'll ask him in the next round. Here we go, round four. Muhammad Ali looks to be the fresher of the two at this point. This is the furthest that George Foreman has gone in a fight since 1972. He's in the fourth round against Muhammad Ali, the dancing master with tremendous hand speed. The left hand scores again. Foreman looking for the opportunity. Looks has a tremendous look of determination. Staggered! Foreman staggered! Definitely! Right on the button! Right on the jaw of George Foreman! That's probably the hardest Foreman has been hit since Gregorio Peralta opened his eye in the first fight. Another right hand taken on the left side of the head of George Foreman. Foreman's face beginning to show signs of puffiness around the right eye, but below the right eye. Wild right hand thrown by Foreman misses the intended target, the jaw of Ali. Foreman tries to score. Ali ties him up in tight. Zach Clayton doing the job separating the fighters. Ali rifles a right to the head of Foreman. Foreman tied up. Ali is getting away with it, tying his man up. There's Ali facing you, Foreman, the strength in his back, you can see, as he tries to work downstairs on Ali. Ali hanging on and continues to get away with it. Ali looks uh, a bit concerned, but uh, what would you expect in there against George Foreman? Foreman not scoring these punches at all. Light, boring punches, unusual for George Foreman. Maybe the heat is getting to George Foreman, as his leg at that point looked a bit on the rubbery side. Ali scores a light combination there, but no serious damage done. Both fighters beginning to show signs 
of a little bit of tiring now. And you have to expect it with the temperatures close to 80 here in Zaire, Africa. Neither one of those punches were damaging to the body of Ali. George Foreman's legs look almost weary now. It does not look strong in the legs to me at all. Right hand missed, the second one just clipped Ali in the back of the head. Muhammad Ali with that straight left hand. Now the left hook trying to catch the right eye of George Foreman, no doubt about it. Ali hanging on behind the head. Foreman hasn't been able to push Ali off and set him up. Misses the right hand. Ali is definitely confusing him. 30 seconds left in round four. Foreman continues to come on. Ali backs up. Not as much certainly as we expected. Ali hanging tough, not coming in and moving out. Left hand misses, goes over the shoulder of Ali, and again Ali hangs on. Zach Clayton, the referee, separates the two fighters. There's the vicious left. No real serious damage done. Ali is getting his hand up. The wild left by the jaw of Ali. Look at Foreman's face. He does look tired. He doesn't have the bounce in his legs. Misses again. The bell ends round four. The stadium is intense. John Bailey, responsible for bringing this fight into being with Hank Schwartz and Don King. Is it living up to your expectations, John Daly? It is absolutely fantastic, and Ali is winning all the way for me. And I think he's going to win it within another four rounds. A prediction there, a prediction there from John Daly on Ali. Jo Joe Frazier has been watching this, and he's got a word to say in praise of the referee. We've got a replay coming up, though, right now. Here's a replay coming up right now. Take another look at this one. Take another look at this one. Leaning back on the ropes. Leaning back on the ropes. Take us through this, would you, Joe? I would think that George is throwing his shots a little too wild. Otherwise, he should shorten up a little more. He's close to the man. He's not the green way back. You don't need the big, wide shot. All in the closest. And the other tribute you had for us was for the referee, right? I would say Zach doing a very good job. Here we go, the bell sounds, round number five, Ali stood through part of the round as he allows Foreman to back him up. Foreman scored a pretty good right hand that time to the body of Muhammad Ali. Ali's face showing no signs of being hit at all as he takes a light left hand. This is straight left hand thrown by Ali. Face of Foreman beginning to look marked. No cuts, nobody's been down, we're in round five. Foreman definitely has a puffy right eye. Straight left hand taken by Foreman. Ali continues to talk to him. Foreman trying to back Ali up and really throws the right hand in the body of Muhammad Ali. Doesn't seem to bother Ali as Ali stands on his toes, works downstairs, goes downstairs. Good left hook by Ali. Good left hook by Foreman. Again, the right hand of Ali is going to the left side of the face of Foreman as the infighting is really better for Muhammad Ali, upstairs anyway. Careful, careful, careful. Here's some real good shots to the oh, body careful. thrown by Foreman. Foreman on the left of your screen, Ali on the right. Ali leans up against the ropes. Right hand taken on the gloves by Ali. There's a real wild right hand taken in the back of the head of Ali. Foreman with a wild right again. Ali looks like he's trying to rest in this round. His punches are not doing any damage though. Vicious right thrown to the body of Ali. Wild right misses the head of Ali. The left taken on the glove of Ali, the right glove. Foreman pouring, pouring, pouring. Foreman trying to set him up, trying to set him up to the body. Ali does look tired now. Foreman seems to be coming back with more steam. Scores with a light right hand. One minute left in round five. This is George Foreman's round all the way. Ali, this is a cruising round for him. Foreman wailing away, and Ali says, is that the best punch? Foreman just working the body, hasn't hit Ali except once with the face. Neither fighter has been down. Ali picks it up a little bit, about 40 seconds left in round number five.
How did you read that one, Jim? I didn't Ollie understand. Ollie is unbelievable. I thought he was hurt. I thought his body was hurt. And he came back. He hit form with everything, and he winked at me. Watch the slow mo now. Ollie yes, there's forward. no doubt about it. He winked right over here to this corner, and that. George, do you remember when I put him in? Here we go with round number six. There was some confusion in between rounds as officials in attendance are tightening up the ropes to prevent Ali from leaning back. And Angelo Dundee, the trainer of Ali, came racing across the ring and really did some yelling. They're still screaming back and forth about the ropes, whether they want them tight or loose. Zach Clayton separates the two fighters. Ali goes head hunting again. Oh, great left hand taken on the face of George Foreman. Ali scored three in a row that time. Foreman's right eye looking to be closed. Ali has tremendous look of confidence on that face. These punches are landing, bouncing off the eye of the heavyweight champion of the world, George Foreman. Foreman has his work cut out for him. Ali gets a hand. Tremendous crowd here at 20th of May Stadium. Now Ali backs up against the ropes, takes a low blow, not intended by George Foreman. Light left on the break by Ali. Foreman has no steam in any of those punches, and you don't need me to tell you that. Ali leans on him. Ali sits back on the ropes and tells Foreman to come in. Foreman looks like, uh, well, a bit arm weary until that right hand is trying to set Ali up. Ali doing exactly what he's actually not supposed to do, leaning up against the ropes and taking the punches of the heavy-hitting George Foreman. Foreman doesn't really look to have that tremendous punch anymore, but I'm sure that when he gets a little respite here, as they're cruising a little bit now in round six, that uh, he'll be able to deliver the thundering, booming, rifling shots that he's capable of delivering at any time. A minute left in round six. Muhammad is allowing Foreman to come in on him, inviting him in and counter-punching, inviting him in, talking to him. Angelo Dundee screaming from the corner, Ali, get off those ropes. But Ali continues to talk to Foreman. Straight left hand on the chin of George Foreman. Foreman paws in. He's looking for room to unload that right hand. 30 seconds left in the round. Now Ali squares away, watching box. He loves to put on combinations in the last few seconds of the round. Right hand misses. That right hand scored by Ali. Look at these combinations that Ali lands. The speed of Ali at this point is outclassed the strength and booming punches of Foreman. Neither fighter has been down. Round six. Ali looking, Ali looking, Jimmy, to become the second man in the history of the heavyweight ranks to regain his title, and he looks impressive to this point. He's looking fantastic right now. He's laying on the ropes. Everyone is saying, get off the rope, but I think he's resting. He knows that Foreman is basically spent. I think he's going to try to take it as far as he can and then try to knock him out. Do you think Foreman is in that bad of shape? No, I think he's quite foolish. I don't think he's in bad shape. He's fighting real foolish, and you got that experience. I made a statement early that anything can happen. This man got experience, this man got a youth. It's all depends how you've been trained for him. And he's fighting smart, real smart. Yes, I'd hate to predict it, any fight, but my goodness, those people who said Foreman would win in a flash have certainly been proved wrong, those people who said... Here we go, round number seven, and the fighters can't wait to get at each other. As this time, Big Foreman comes stalking across the ring, delivering some light uh, hooks to the body of Ali that certainly are doing no problems or causing any problems to Muhammad Ali. Ali spins him around out of the corner now. Ali is definitely in command as far as the movement in the ring is concerned. Foreman looking for the opportunity to unload. It's a left hand again in the face of Foreman. Definitely Ali is scoring more punches than George Foreman. The punches to the body of Ali are not hurting him. They're not taking a toll. The man is in tremendous physical condition in that part of his body. 
George Foreman tries to work again inside on Ali. Ali pushes his hand away. Again, Ali ties up George Foreman. Foreman doesn't look to have a good bounce on his leg anymore. But of course, Foreman being the one punch artist that he is, who knows what might happen as the rounds continue. We're in round number seven, midway through. Straight left and a good right hand taken to the side of the head. The tactic by Ali is to jab with the left or the right hand and hang on. George Foreman, of course, famous for his booming punches. Foreman continues to come in on Ali. He wants Ali bad. It's just a matter of trying to set him up to deliver the real heavy blow. Ali rifles into the right hand. Ali's face is not marked. George Foreman gets in a pretty good left of the body that time underneath the ribcage of Muhammad Ali. Punch was hard to see on television, but he did score a pretty good punch inside. Ali doing what he did to some smaller men, leaning on jo George Foreman. There's a good right uppercut thrown by Foreman. This punch he's thrown in a couple of rounds. Ali hangs on. Both fighters beginning to show signs of being tired. 30 seconds left in this round seven. Very even fight. Hard to tell exactly who would be up in front, perhaps by a point, maybe two, one way or the other. Looks like Ali could be up in front with the punches that he's scoring to the head of Foreman. Foreman tries to score some punches, definitely showing some fatigue in the waning seconds in round seven. Ali continues to talk. Foreman. Tries to deliver some shots to the body. The bell sounds, ending round seven. Jim Brown. This nigga, Muhammad Ali, is unreal. He seems to have the whole fight in control. George Foreman seems to have nothing left at this time. Ali seems to be waiting, as I said earlier, and I think that he knows that he has control. And now we have reached a point where George Foreman's only had one fight this long since February 1970. Only one fight this long since then. What would you say the position is on points at the moment, Joe Frazier? I would say right now that uh, my man is in the lead. I got a feeling that George not going to make it from the looks of it. Now tell me the one thing that people obviously all around the world will be cheering for one or the other, but do you think Foreman's got a killer punch? If he lands one punch, can he save it? Well, I would say, yeah, if it land on a target, any man can take a punch out. can take you out with one punch. And George is fighting fully. Here we go. The bell sounds. Round number eight. And an even fight here live via satellite. A video techniques presentation worldwide. Ali working to the head of George Foreman. Ali scores again with a light left hand. At that time, a straight left bounces the head back of Foreman. A quick, short jab with the right hand bounces the head around of Foreman. Foreman looking to deliver the... Real heavy blows. Now he's bouncing better. Almost falls out of the ring. Ali left that punch. Twisted his body to the side. And the left hand went kind of over the shoulder. Ali bends him over. Zach Clayton right on the spot. The referee. Chairman of the Pennsylvania State Boxing Commission. Ali, it seems to be, well, kind of going the way he wants. He's not dancing as much as we thought. But he uh, seems able to control him. Now, it's a pretty good, good heavy right hand taken on the left side of the cheek by Ali. Good right hand thrown by Foreman that time. Again, for Foreman, it seems to be one, or two, maybe three good punches. That punch taken on the gloves. That one slips by the left ear. Tries to go with that right uppercut that felled Kenny Norton. The left hand again thrown out by Foreman. Both fighters now very much more fatigued than they were a round or so ago. The heat is pretty high here, around 80 degrees. The humidity is probably 85 to 90. At age 32, Muhammad Ali is bouncing around pretty good for the 
24-year-old woman hanging pretty tough in there. Again, I caution you to look for the one punch that George Foreman can deliver at any time. This man is devastating, to say the least. These punches are not at this particular time. Tried to pull a sneaky right hand on Ali. Ali hanging on, getting away with it. Getting away with it. The left hand taken on the side of Ali's cheek. The left hook again on the side of the glove. Right hand by Foreman was not effective. The right uppercut did bounce the head a little bit. Punches will not hurt Ali. Ali just takes him. Protecting his face at all times does Ali. Foreman throwing more punches now. Maybe this could be the tactic of Ali to let the man punch himself out. 30 seconds left in round eight. Very even fight. Ali, a sneaky right hand. This is the most joyous scene ever seen in the history of boxing. This is an incredible scene. The place is going wild. Muhammad Ali has won. Muhammad Ali has won by a knockdown. By a knockdown. The thing they said was impossible. He's done. What he predicted to me in Deer Lake, he has done absolutely unexact. Here comes, here comes the replay. The scenes in the ring are incredible. Jim, you're with Here it is. The greatest fight of his life. Watch it now. Watch it closely there. He's been taking it easy, and then suddenly the moment came. Suddenly the moment came. Watch it. And that was no phantom. That was no phantom punch. That was no phantom punch, and he's down and out. Definitely was not a phantom punch. However many times you look at that, it's the clearest punch you could see. George Foreman down on the floor. No phantom punch. A punch of real power. He softened his man up. They said Ali didn't have a killer punch. Well, that was it. But my God, he softened his man up. And over there, over the there, magic of Bob, Bob. Oh, Mohammed. Bob Sheridan is trying in the ring to get to Ali, but he's not succeeding at the moment. There you see the pandemonium. There you see the pandemonium, one of the greatest fights of all time. There you see those are the Zaire version of hard hats there, trying somehow to protect the two fights. Angelo Dundee predicted it. Angelo said he would knock him out. Angelo came over here and waved to Jim and I. He put his thumb up as if to say, if this was exactly what I predicted. Well, I must make one point. Muhammad Ali had been waving at me, winking at me all night because he knew I thought that George Foreman would knock him out. And he is a friend of mine, so he was saying to me after every round, look at me, big fella, because I'm doing it. Fantastic. Fantastic performance. There you see the seat in the ring. I can't see much, much hope of Bob getting a very deep coherent interview at this moment. I don't think we're going to better talk to Muhammad Ali in depth at the moment. But there you see the scene. The whole place is going wild. The people right at the back of the auditorium. They're on their feet too. They're on their feet. Is this the They're on their feet. They're not on their feet. They're on their feet. Or their foot. And there you see... There's one thing about this Look at that face. Look at that face. A man who can scarcely believe what has happened to him who can scarcely believe what has happened to him. George Foreman, the man who was invincible. George Foreman, the man who was totally invincible. Muhammad Ali is certainly suffering worse punishment in the middle of that ring at the moment. Worse punishment in the middle of that ring than he ever got from George Foreman. And there's George Foreman, look at that, his head is fallen. He's really, really an injured man. And the man they said that could only float like a butterfly, but not sing like a bee, has really stayed. George Foreman, the beaten champion. What a moment of tragedy this is. He left here. There he goes. No one in the auditorium paying really any attention to him as he goes. As Muhammad Ali knows from that first fight against Joe Fraser, people are only interested in winners. Look at that sad, dejected head. 
look at the people around him, three or four people maybe. Nobody wants to mob a beaten champion. The whole, the whole of boxing history has been turned upside down. That lonely figure going into the dressing room was not Muhammad Ali, but George Foreman. Meanwhile, the scenes, as you can see them there, the Zaire police and army are trying to protect Muhammad Ali. There he is. There is the picture of the man who has undoubtedly fought his greatest fight tonight, won his greatest victory tonight. Muhammad Ali on his way to his dressing room. There he goes. Hooray! Hooray, they yell. Hooray, they yell. Ami Sanki. In fact, there is disappointment. There is enormous disappointment that he's going, actually. There are people yelling for him to stay. Oh, and there are people trying to fight off the press. Look, there they press of people, I should add, in case people think that that is a Nixonian attack on the media. With him just behind him, you may have seen Bob Foster there, former light heavyweight champion. Fantastic promotion. Fantastic performance. Muhammad Ali completely fooled a lot of us who thought that George Foreman was invincible. It makes us take a second look at the two listening fights. But as I said earlier, he has magic. Here it is. As we see Muhammad Ali dispose of the tired George Foreman, Ali unleashes a combination on the very fatigued George Foreman. <laughs> Coming up here now. Right hand misses. Watch the left. There's the left. Now a straight right hand. That one spins his head. That's the knockout punch right there. It was a straight right hand taken right on the face of Muhammad Ali. This is the dressing room of Muhammad Ali. David Frost is making his way down there. Dundee, the only single man that I know that said he wouldn't knock out George Foreman. But Angelo said he was absolutely sure. I couldn't. Be I didn't believe Angelo. His closer friend uh, as Angelo Dundee is to me, Jimmy. I just didn't believe it. Well, I believe that Angelo believed it because he was absolute about it. Did you notice Ali look in the mirror in his dressing room to make sure he wasn't marked? What does this do, Jimmy? Does it open up the heavyweight championship again? It Will opens he it up. It opens it up. Will he retire? Is he the greatest man that ever fought? Well, right now he is, Bob. I'll tell you. Here we go, we've got uh, the dressing room. There was the corner you just finished. And I'm telling you that he has no power. I kept telling you he don't hit hard. And guess what he did in the end? He stopped fighting dirty. Right. Yeah, you don't know his thumb got me now. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 right eye. But I'm smart. See, I'm a pro. I'm a pro, see? I chased Felton with my arm reaching and then grabbed him until I cleared up. The pros are low. Allah is good, but that's the power of Allah. That's how I couldn't get up. He hit him with right hand. He get up. He ain't never had hey, right 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 right. I kept talking to him during the fight, too. That's right, Muhammad. Congratulations. Am I the greatest of all times? Muhammad, you told me in Deer Lake you were the greatest of all time. And I think everybody out there watching now will say that you've proved it to me. man who was burning me up, too power, too strong, our foreman will look like a baby. It wasn't a close fight, was it? No, it no, wasn't a close fight. No, no. no. Was it close, no, no. Was it close before I knocked him out? No, no. No, it wasn't. Oh, no. You were you, wait. Is this on close? You tell, is it live? Right now. Everybody stop talking now. Attention. I told you. All of my critics, I told you all that I was the greatest of all time. When I beat Sunday Liston, I told you today I'm still the greatest of all time. Never again defeat me. Never again say that I'm going to be defeated. Never again make me the underdog until I'm about 50 years old. Right. Then you might get me. But I didn't dance. I didn't dance for a reason. 
I wanted to make him lose all his power. I kept telling him he had no punch. He couldn't hit. He's swinging like a sissy. He's missing. Let me see your box. I hadn't started dancing yet. You can't say my legs are gone. You can't say I was tired because what happened? I didn't dance from the second round on. I stayed on the ropes. When I stay on the ropes, you think I'm doing bad. But I want all boxers to put this in the page of boxers. Staying on the ropes is a beautiful thing with a heavyweight when you make him shoot his best shots and you know he's not hitting you. I would have gave George Solomon two rounds of steady punching because after that he was mine. But he was falling. He was missing. I don't know if I'm going to fight again or not. I'm going to retire as of now. I have to talk to my leader, the most honorable. Are you still planning to retire? I said, I'm alaikum to all the Muslims. Thanks to Almighty God Allah. I want all of you fans out there who believe in me, read the Muhammad Speaks newspapers, go to your local Muslim temple, and learn more about the life-giving power from Allah through Elijah Muhammad that I've got. You saw all the white people, the critics, the world, had me ranked to go down. This was that man, and Allah, God was with me, and this man looked like nothing. That's right. well, I want you to remember that. Well, you want to know where I get the power? Visit your local Muslim mosque. Read that Muhammad Speaks newspaper. That's right. Take it from me. I'm that just proves you can have commercials on closed-circuit television just as you can have it on real television. Muhammad, what did you say to George It's not a commercial. No, Tell him people to believe. believe. Oh, God. God. Tell me, what did you say to George Foreman before the fight? What did you say? To I told him he has no power uh, in the corners and in the clinches. I said, shoot your best shot. I'm going back to the ropes. They told me he was strong. Didn't, this, didn't I look stronger than him? Why, why didn't you tell me, Mohammed? This is the thing that puzzled people. Why was it when you were on the ropes that he could not hurt you, even when you were right there on the ropes? Blocking, and I was pulling back, and I have a radar built inside me. I know how to judge punches. Didn't I tell all of you out there? on your local radio shows, mostly black stations. I told you, I'm gonna float like a butterfly and sing like a bee. His hands can't hit what his eyes can't see. So that's what happened. That's what you said to me. But tell me now, are you really going to retire, Mom? I'm seriously thinking about retiring. There's nothing else for me to fight. I told her, well, I'm gonna retire. I'm gonna hold the title for a few months. I don't, they took my title unjustly. I told you, I'm the real champion. I told you, I'm the champion of the world. All of you bow. All of my critics crawl. All of you suckers who write the Rain magazine. Boxing Little Stair. All of you suckers bow because the stage was set. You made him great. You made him a bad John Lewis. You made him a hard puncher. But I want everybody from this moment on to recognize me as the scholar of boxing. If you want to know any damn thing about boxing, don't go to no boxing experts in Las Vegas. Don't go to no Jimmy the Greek. Jimmy Come to Muhammad Ali. What? I am the man. One I'm last question, hell. Muhammad. Hello, my man, Hugh Hefner. Hugh Hefner out there. Muhammad, one last question. Oh, Tell me, is, would you say that this at this moment, is this the happiest moment of your life? No, no. Happiest moment of my life when I met Elijah Muhammad, the freedom speaker of black people. But I want to say this. Hello to all my friends in Louisville, Kentucky. Joe Martin, Fred Stoner, all of my friends in Louisville, Kentucky, where I started. I'm recognized all over the world now, but my greatness came and started in Louisville, Kentucky. And that's one of the greatest cities in America, Louisville, Kentucky. And I predict that Louisville, Kentucky will have another world champion because Louisville is the greatest. Louisville